The Hidden Immunity Idol has the ability, in its most basic form, to block all votes cast against one person at one tribal council. It's a powerful tool by itself, but when combined with outside of the box thinking, it can completely change the game. Wait, what's happening? In today's video, we'll be discussing five contestants that hack the game with creative strategies and synergy with idols, or even to outplay them. And make sure to like the video. <laughs> Jeez, what was that guy's problem? Perhaps he found himself in a similar situation to the infamous Mike Gabler from season 43. A phrase I'll be using throughout this video is idle maximization, as sure you can play your idol to protect you for one round, but what about the next one? Gabler went on a journey with Carla and Dwight, where after successfully risking his vote, he won an idol that could be played at the first two tribal councils he attended. He did tell his tribe about the idol, which may sound questionable, until you realise they looked through his bag later anyway, so either way they would know about his idol. Idol. Nonetheless, the Baka tribe lost immunity, and with Gabler being over 20 years older than the rest of his tribe, plus him dropping the ball on the first immunity challenge, pun intended, Mike was a target. One of the features that seemingly is a staple of modern Survivor is the shot in the dark, where you sacrifice your vote for a 1 in 6 chance at immunity. Gabler immediately goes back to camp, telling the tribe he's going to play the shot in the dark on himself, rolling the dice for immunity. This causes an innate reaction of fear from his tribe mates, as all it takes is for Gabler to be immune and someone to vote elsewhere and they could be blindsided. It really is a great bluff strategy, further accentuated by the fact that if Gabler failed with a shot in the dark, there is always a threat of him playing his idol afterwards and still guaranteeing he block all of the votes cast against him. Ultimately, Gabler essentially forces the other five to cannibalise each other, as calling his bluff would be too risky, and he doesn't even play his shot in the dark in the end. He also doesn't play his idol, meaning he's guaranteed immunity at the second tribal he attends. While it is questionable how much strategic thinking Gabler actually put into this move, his idol hack can be very useful for a contestant, as he utilises modern mechanics like the shot in the dark and timed idols. And on the topic of time, we're going back to Season 28 with Llama Enthusiast Tony, who simultaneously showed the power in faking an idol's effects, while somehow making the super idol more overpowered than it already is. In Episode 6, when the tribes merged, it was revealed a special idol was hidden at their camp, with unique powers, but they weren't specified. It was also very well hidden, only being discovered by Tony in Episode 9. Unlike regular idols, where they're more prediction reliant, being played after the votes are cast but before they're revealed, this super idol that Tony found could be played after all the votes are revealed, essentially making Tony invincible as long as it was in his possession. At the final five, Tony pulled out his iconic bag of tricks, revealing a standard idol he found that he would use that round. After that, however, he produced the super idol, but only said he would keep it a secret until later, getting the ball rolling for his ingenious plan. See, much like standard idols, the super idol expired after the final five, so at the final four, Tony had nothing more than a souvenir. But back at camp, Tony lied about the effects of his idol, essentially revealing, in a cryptic way, it was an idol that could be played at the final four. This was a smart way to ensure Tony had immunity, as if he was ever blindsided, the super idol would have saved him, but at the final four, his lie compensated for around this idol couldn't save him. So while Cass had individual immunity at the final four tribal council, Tony's expired idol essentially operated as another individual immunity necklace. The lie wasn't too far-fetched, and even if people questioned him, it was the final four. They simply couldn't risk throwing the votes onto him with such small numbers. Number three on this list is probably the closest instance we've seen to mind control on Survivor, and it comes from Australian Survivor Champions vs Contenders. This round was the final nine, where several rounds prior, Benji had either lost allies or almost got voted out. His main enemy was Matt Rogers, leader of the Majority Alliance, Alliance, consisting of previous contenders Fenella and Shawnee, plus Shane, Steve and Sharn. 
Heaven forbid anyone having to recite that alliance with a lisp. After finding an idol at the immunity challenge, Sean tries to slip it into her shorts, but they slide out, causing everyone to know she had a public idol. It's also important to note, at this challenge, Benji won immunity. Back at camp, Matt wanted to target Brian, as despite being a fellow champion, he was seen as untrustworthy. Benji got Vanilla and Shawnee on side, then Brian plus Monica, in order to vote out Matt, and it all sounds good, right? Well, that's where we get back to Sharn, who decided to play her public idol to prevent her being targeted in future rounds and played it on Matt. This is obviously awful for Benji, as every one of the five votes his group casted could be nullified. Instead, with some quick thinking, Benji tells Sharn to stop and tells her to play the idol on herself because, quote, they split the votes on her. Now, in hindsight, this doesn't make much sense, but in the heat of the moment at Tribal Council, Sean eventually agrees and changes the idol onto herself. These kinds of moments have happened before, like Malcolm telling Reynolds to hold up in the Caramon Final 11 Tribal Council, but to less effect. But Benji simply outplays his opposition by redirecting an idol onto someone who wasn't even being targeted, allowing him to take out his main opponent while burning Sean's idol. While simple in presentation, the final five idol play from Natalie and San Juan del Sur is a textbook example of utilising an idol to control an entire tribal council. This idol was founded by Natalie alongside Baylor in episode 10, with people knowing about it coming into the final five. Keith was the biggest target at this tribal, but won immunity, thus causing Jacqueline to be the next target, and that was fine for Natalie. But the issue was the fifth person in the game. Missy. See, this season was blood versus water themed, with Baylor being Missy's daughter. If Natalie took out Jacqueline and Keith won final four immunity, she'd be relying on him to strategically vote for her. And again, let me reiterate, she'd be relying on Keith for strategy. Idols are everywhere, idols are everywhere. I say stick to the plan. With a known idol and it being the final five, the last time to play idols, nobody wanted to target Natalie. At Tribal, Natalie plays her idol in a way to beautifully manage the jury. You see, typically jurors on Survivor vote for who they want to win, either based on emotions or who played the game the most strategically. Some of course do both. Natalie first asked Jacqueline if she voted for who she told her to vote for, which Jacqueline agrees with, shifting all the credit for the eventual blind side to Natalie. Previously, Natalie flipped her vote from Keith to Alec to weaken her enemy John, but acted like a klutz, so people thought she made a genuine mistake rather than carrying out a well-calculated plan. This big strategic move therefore also helps recontextualize that move to the jurors, that she knew all along what she was doing at that final seven tribal. The emotionally charged jurors also adored Natalie because her target was Baylor, who alongside her mother, were heavily disliked by the jury and were famously noted by Reed as the wicked stepmother and her spoiled daughter. This is one of the best instances of jury management in the history of the show and secured the win for for, 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 for. This is an announcement. This channel has been hacked. You have five seconds to subscribe or this channel will be deleted. <sighs> well, thank goodness you're all subscribed, eh? Last but certainly not least comes from Davy Rickenbacker, who found an idol in episode 2 of David vs Goliath. Fast forward to episode 8, where, after losing Elizabeth at the merge, there were only 5 Davids to 7 Goliaths, with them needing to win this round, otherwise they'd lose all control. One cross-alliance between the groups existed in the Strike Force, with 3 Davids and 3 Goliaths, where one of the Goliaths, Alec, informed Nick his group were voting for Christian. The Davids also suspected Dan, another Goliath, had at least one idol, and with Angelina's name thrown around as a potential voting option, the stage was set. At Tribal Council, Davy stands up and plays his idol on Christian, which begins a fantastic move. Upon realising all the votes for Christian would be nullified, Dan plays his idol for Angelina after just a little nudge on the shoulder by her. The expected outcome was that this tribal would be a wash, causing a revote now that all of Christian's votes were being blocked, and eventually so would all of Angelina's. And yes, 
Dan Diplock two votes cast against Angelina, but then another name came up. John. Predicting the Goliaths to potentially play their idol, the Davids split their vote with Christian, Davy, and Nick voting for John and Gabby and Carl who were left out of the plan voting for Angelina like normal. This move is genius on so many levels. Firstly it eliminates John which takes out a potential challenge beast, eliminates Dan's wingman who through his two idols had a lot of power at this stage in the game and takes out an integral member of the Goliaths. It also puts Dan into an uncomfortable situation as he essentially wasted his idol on Angelina but if he somehow played it on John, Angelina still would have went with the remaining two votes. Plus if Dan didn't use his idol, he would have lost John and Angelina would have still been in the game while annoyed at him for not playing his idol on her. Finally, even though the Davids were in the minority, the Goliaths couldn't split the vote themselves. The minority split vote we see here is one of the craziest, yet best strategies to accompany an idol, making it fully deserving of number one. If you want to see my numbers rise, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know any idol hacks you'd like to see appear in a future video. If you like dream casting videos, here's one where I take the Survivor 40 forecast and replace it with a full Heroes vs Villains returnee season. Nonetheless, have a great day. Oh, peace!